Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our service this morning. It is lovely to see you all as we gather today. Lovely to see you, whether you are in the building here or whether you are joining us on Zoom from home or whether you're watching this later on YouTube. It's great to be with us. We are again, for some of you, this will be the first time that we have met in this space rather than in our main worship area. The reason we're doing this is because as it gets colder, um, it is going to be easier um, and more manageable for us as a church to heat this space rather than heating our main worship area. Okay, so there is unfortunately just a very practical reason why we're meeting in here. But actually, well, actually this is what used to be the chancel of the church. So it's a very good place for us to meet, but also wherever we meet, God is present with us. And on each of your tables, you will see that you have a cross and you have a candle that remind us of the depth of God's love for us, that in Jesus, he was willing to give his life in our place so that we can know new life with him. And the candle reminds us of God's guiding presence with us throughout our lives. And so we're reminded in these from the very beginning of our time together of God's work of grace towards each one of us. I'd just like to say a big thank you to all those people who helped set up this room because it's taken a bit of time uh, to get it looking like this and actually being a good space for worship. So thank you to everyone uh, who has been involved in that in whatever way. And also, uh, Hopefully our tech will work a little bit better this week than it did last week. Okay, we are learning as we go. Um, unfortunately, Mark can't be with us this morning. He is joining us on Zoom, but he's not well. So thanks to Debbie, who is running the tech this morning. <laughs> It'll all be fine, Debbie. It'll all be fine. But as we come together this morning, we come together for this service of remembrance and thanksgiving for departed loved ones, those that we have loved and lost. This service is a reminder of one of the lines from our creed that we often say that talks about the communion of saints. But actually, we are bound together as believers in Jesus in a family that is both earthly and heavenly. Those who are here with us, also those who have gone before us. And so this service is actually finds all of its meaning in the resurrection of Jesus. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we can have hope that there is life after death, that God has something for us beyond the horizon of this world. And so we come into this place today as an act of hope. And I pray that this service will be a service of hope, that it will be a service of comfort as we come to remember our loved ones. But I would just say, make sure as we go through this time that we give each other space to be ourselves in this. It can be difficult as we come to remember, as we name loved ones before God. And so let's just be aware and attentive to the needs of each other as we care for each other as a family at this time. But before we come to our opening words, I do have some bands of marriage that I am going to read out. It's getting close, Jamie. <laughs> it's great to have Jamie with us this morning. Lynn was with us uh, last week um, and you are getting married. What's the, what's the date? It's the 12th, 12th of November. So. I'm working that out as soon, <laughs> definitely soon. Uh, it's a real privilege to read these bands and to be able to pray for you and Lynn. So I publish the bands of marriage between James Spencer Ballard of St. Peter's Rock Ferry, but with a qualifying connection to this parish, and Lynn Swindles also of St. Peter's Rock Ferry. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, 
you are to declare it. And this is for the second time of asking. It's quite quiet, isn't it now? Shall we carry on? <laughs> Let's pray for Jamie and Lynn. Lord God, we thank you that you love each one of us and that as we find you, we find out what love really looks like. As Jamie and Lynn head towards their wedding day, we pray that your love would be right at the center of their preparations and of their lives, drawing them closer to each other and to you, and that that wedding service might be a wonderful time in itself, but also the beginning of a beautiful walk where you are walking with them each and every step of their lives together. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I'm going to ask Debbie to bring up our words on the screen. If you're not able to see the screen, then there are printed sheets um, just by the door as you came in. So please do uh, just let us know if you want, need one of those and we can get one to you. And so if you would join in with the words in bold print. Our God, we gather from the valleys of life rising up from the deep shadows of our troubles to worship in the bright light of God's presence. We gather to worship the steadfast God who helps us overcome our fears and superstitions, to worship in the protecting presence of God. We gather to worship the watchful God whose attention never wavers, and whose care is eternal. Come, let us worship our God, who is more dependable than the mountains and more reliable than the sunrise. Amen. And so we're going to sing our first uh, act of sung worship this morning. If you'd like to stand for this, you're very welcome. If you'd like to remain seated, that is fine. As we sing together, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy. Whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All is at rest I in my Savior am happy and blessed Watching and waiting, looking above Filled with His goodness, lost in His love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior Savior all the day long. This 
This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. If you'd like to be seated, we're just going to take a moment. Debbie, could you turn us down a little bit again, please? Thanks. We're going to work it out as we go, okay? We're just going to take a moment to pray for our young people, okay, as they prepare to go out into their group up in St. Peter's room, and they'll be coming back in to join us for our act of commemoration just later in the service so if i could just ask someone on the balcony uh, to let them know when that's about to start that'd be wonderful thank you but let's pray as they go to their group lord jesus we thank you so much that you love each one of us and you bring us together as family as our young people and their leaders go out now please would you speak to each one of them as we'd ask the same for each one of us who remain in this room that we might hear your voice to us, that we might know you better and know how to walk with you better each and every day of our life. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Brilliant. We will look forward to seeing you all soon. Just to say, there are a few seats at the front here. If anyone wants to come and sit here, you are very welcome to. And would it be possible just to close the, I'm just thinking of drafts and things. If we can close the door at the side, um, that'd be wonderful. So we're going to come to the time in our service now where we bring ourselves before God, where we recognize God's call to holiness in our lives. And we recognize that we fall short of what God calls us to in our relationship with him and in our relationships with each other. And that as when we fall out with each other, we have to ask for forgiveness to rebuild those relationships. So we do exactly the same with God. We're reminded by God's word that God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. And so I invite you to join with me in the prayer of confession. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And so may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. And we join together in the prayer for today, the collect written specially for this Sunday. We pray together. God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age. As we rejoice in the faith of your saints, inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
we're going to have our two Bible readings for this morning now. So first, first, I'll invite John to come forward to read and then hand over to Michael. First reading is taken from Luke chapter 6, verses 20 to 31. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil. Because the Son of Man, because of the Son of Man, rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how our ancestors treated the false prophets. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who ill treat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading today is taken from St. Paul's letters to the Ephesians, chapter, chapter 1, reading verses 11 to the end. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. 
and God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, open your word to us today that we may new, discover new things about you and how you want us to live our lives as your people. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. It's nice to be with you back. And Linda and I have been away for three weekends. Uh, so it's, uh, we haven't been around since the beginning of the month. So it's lovely to be here. Unfortunately, Linda's got a chest infection, so she can't be with us today. Well, what turmoil we've had in the political life of our country in recent weeks. And Jesus' words and actions bring real refreshment and inspiration. Before he addressed his disciples, and I'm going to concentrate on the passage from Luke this morning, we read that people had to come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those troubled by evil spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. What a contrast to our politicians. Jesus had the power and has the power to transform lives of those who come to him. That's clear. And so having demonstrated to his disciples how to respond to the needs of people, Jesus explained how he wanted them to live. And he showed them that the principles and values of the kingdom of God are different to those which are followed by our culture. You and I are both followers of Jesus and also members of British society. And this can sometimes cause conflict around us and within us. Some have tried to overcome this friction by withdrawing from society. But others have sought to bring Christian principles into the law and government of this land. And as we look at the situation in some other countries, Christians face rejection and violence as they endeavor to live by God's standards. So understanding this clash, Jesus called us first to seek blessing, secondly, to avoid the woes of this world, and thirdly, to love our enemies. First then, to seek blessing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give some present day examples of those who will receive in a very special way, God's blessing. We read in verse 20, looking at his disciples, Jesus said, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. An example of this, many Christians in Pakistan are in bonded labor, making bricks for the building industry. And due to their low wages, they take loans from their employers to meet their living expenses and then cannot repay. And that puts their families in eternal bondage, generation after generation. God will bless them. Verse 21, blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. There's a famine in Northern Kenya where Christians are in a minority and have been excluded from receiving food aid from the official sources. They will receive God's blessing. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Recently, three Christians were killed and two injured in Kaduna State in Nigeria, 
as Islamist extremists attacked two Sunday morning church services in a village called Rubu. They will be blessed that those two congregations through what they have faced. And blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. All Vietnamese Christian families were forced out of their village because they refused to reconvert to the animist religion of the other villagers. They've since been allowed back, but are now not allowed to leave or to have visitors and under close surveillance by the police. They will receive God's blessing. Rejoice in that day, says Jesus, and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. To all people who suffer for following Jesus, he promises his protective presence now and eternal blessings to come. And as I've re read those examples um, and discovered them and read many more others too, I wonder whether I, and indeed would you, be willing to go through that sort of toil and tribulation in order to receive God's blessing of eternal life. But it's a reality for many of our brothers and sisters around the world. But secondly, we're to avoid the woes of the world. Woe to you who are rich, for you've already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed for you will now go hungry. A woe warns of condemnation. Jesus admonished the callous, rich, and others who are comfortable with their state in life and are unconcerned about the needs of others. One of the dangers of wealth is that it can lead us to believe we can live an independent life. We don't have to bother about anyone else. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Jesus forewarned those who do not engage with God on his terms that they actually do face a terrible day of reckoning. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for that is how their fathers treated the false prophets. Jesus compared the lack of true spiritual dimension to life the false prophets of old. These prophets assured their hearers that they were good people and that all would end well for them. They, they sort of pat them on the back. But have you and I grasped that the world's values are not God's values? We need to be guided and led by the teachings and principles we find in the scriptures. Thirdly, to love our enemies, and this is one of, I think, the toughest parts of this passage. Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who ill-treat you. Now, to be honest, if I was a Ukrainian, that is a heck of a tough message. I would want to condemn the enemy. But Jesus' call focuses on our actions and attitudes towards others. He offers no easy words about how outsiders should be viewed. Jesus is concerned that we show our love in service, even to our enemies. Our model is Jesus himself. And he's quoted later in the, that passage uh, um, or, or the chapter, where he says, be merciful just as your father is merciful. In other words, do to others what God has done for you and for me. And Jesus gave three examples of love in action. First, if you, someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. Now, probably and possibly this was with religious persecution in mind. And the slap refers to being rebuffed. But despite being rejected, Jesus calls us to continue to reach out, which 
indeed could expose us to being spurned once again. But secondly, Jesus gave the instance that if someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. The point being that we are to remain exposed and willing to take yet more risks with people, even when they exploit us. And thirdly, Jesus said, Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. We are to be generous and not hoard or keep account. Are you and I willing to love as Jesus loves, which will at times involve some real, genuine self-denial? Love, it seems, is more than a warm feeling. Finally, remembering and giving thanks. Today we're remembering and giving thanks to those we love who have died. Earlier this month, one of the reasons I was away was that Lynch and I visited my parents' grave in Kent to tidy it. And as I worked in the cemetery, I gave thanks to God that they were the people who had introduced me to Jesus. Today, you may be recalling members of your family and your friendship circle who've departed this life. Is there an action or word you receive from them for which you can give thanks to God? Perhaps you saw one or more of the godly characteristics in their lives of which Jesus has been teaching us today through his word. But as we recall our loved ones, there are, of course, some sad and painful memories, as well as joyful ones. But the nature of love is it can overlook the failings and dwell on the positive aspects of that relationship. Indeed, that implements the very teaching that Jesus gave on how to respond to even hostile relationships. He was not teaching us to be doormats, but to have clear boundaries through which to respond in love to others. So as we finish, remember these two verses. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. In summary, treat others as God has treated you. Let us pray. Lord, these are hard and tough words for us as humans and as your people. But we pray that you will help us to love in this amazing way because we have received that love for you from you. And as we pray, we remember those whom we have loved and are no longer with us. We thank you for those who've touched our lives in special ways. We ask that we may continue to live with that openness and care for others, which too will touch their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, Nigel, because that is not an easy passage from Luke to speak on. And I don't know if you were listening to it thinking, I don't know how I feel about that. Let me tell you that the Lord Jesus came and did all of that before us. We don't have a God who just looks down and says, I want you to act like this because I think you should. We have a God who says, I have come down and I have lived your life and I have been through each and everything and each and every question and each and every rejection as you've been listening to that sermon and listening to those blessings and woes and has been through them for us and ahead of us and who says, yes, I call you to do the same and it's really hard, but I've been there and I am with you 
and I will walk with you in it and give you everything that you need in order to do that and find the blessing in it. So we're going to come to our creed now as we affirm our faith, as we affirm the good news that we have received in Jesus, the good news in which we stand, the good news through which we are saved, and the good news which we hand on to others. So I'd invite you, if you are able, to stand as we declare our faith together. And to do this, we very simply use this morning some words that come straight from God's word. As we say together, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have believed. And this we believe. Amen. And so we're going to sing our next song of worship now, which will lead us into our act of commemoration. We're going to sing together from Psalm 23, The Lord's My Shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. Makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you alone. And I will trust. If you'd like to be seated, I'm going to ask uh, Dave and Jill to come forward just to help with uh, lighting our candles as we go through this act of commemoration.
And the way we do, we'll do this after an opening prayer is that um, Dave and Jill will, as each name is read out from the front, Dave and Jill will lead, light a candle for each name. There is a... That one. That one. And as the names are read out and the candles are lit, if you'd like to stand, just to recognize that this is someone whom you are naming before God today, then you're very welcome to do that. If you would prefer to remain seated, that's absolutely fine. And then at the end of that, I will ask us all to stand as we'll pray together. And so let's take a moment to pray. As we say, God of grace and glory, we come to this moment to remember before you today those we have loved and lost. We thank you for giving them to us to know and to love as companions in our journey on earth. In your compassion, would you console those who mourn and grant to all of us that we may see in death the gate of everlasting life and continue our course on earth in faith through Jesus Christ, the life and the resurrection of all who put their trust in him. And so this is an act not of mourning, but an act of hope, as we trust in God's love and keeping, as we trust in the resurrection of Jesus for ourselves and for those whom we love. And so as I read out the names, beginning with those whose funerals we have held in this church or that we have led at Landican, and then continuing with the names that we as a church family have brought forward for this time. We'll light the candles. And if when your names have, uh, of those that you have mentioned are read, please do feel free to stand if you would like to at that point. And so we name before God today, Lorraine Highton, Edna Kelly, Tommy Long, Eileen Williams, William Smith, Bill Gibbons, Arthur Griffiths, Brenda Squire, Joseph Thomas, Mabel Thomas, David James, Stephen Blaylock, Fred Wilkes, Edith and Les Derman. John O'Hara, Charlie, Claire, and Holly Evans, Mandy Williams, the Earnshaw family. the Grimsley family, Mark Dring, Betty Turnbull, Jane O'Driscoll, Lynn Ellis, Ron Darby, Pat Bloom.
May Richmond, Alan and Yvonne Quatermain, Carol Gardner, Les Mackay, Hannah Mackay, David Lee, James and Letitia Layton, John Bentley, Flo Smith, Hannah Smith, Joan Berkey, Amelia Tunstall, Ariana Whitby, Alec Wright, John Hanton, Rudolf Asselmeyer, Johanna Asselmeyer, Alma Beckett, Paul Williams, Dorothy and Ronald Rigby, Anne Roberts, the Norse family, the Trotter family, Norman and Vera Evans. You may see there is one candle remaining in the center that is as yet unlit. As we gather together here today, there may be those that we haven't named out loud. Maybe people as we've, as we've been sitting here that have come to mind and we thought, I forgot. And we're sitting with that little moment of guilt. This candle is for them. This candle is for those for whom it's just too painful and raw for us to mention today. Those where we may have had conflict or a bad ending in life. For those for whom we're just not yet quite ready to name out loud. And so now we light that candle, asking for God's light and peace to shine his gentle warmth and hope into those situations and that relationship to bring his peace, his healing, and his hope. And so we take a moment of quiet. God, our Father, we thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us and to rise again. His cross declares your love to be without limits. His resurrection declares that death, our last enemy, is defeated. By his victory, we are assured of that promise that you will never leave us or forsake us that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And so we join together in the prayer that will come up on the screen in just a moment. And so we pray together. Grant to us, Lord God, to trust you not for ourselves alone, but for those also whom we love and who are hidden from us by the shadow of death, that as we believe your power 
to have raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, so may we trust your love to give eternal life to all who believe in him. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The eternal God is our dwelling place. And underneath are the everlasting arms. Blessed is the Lord, our strength and our salvation. And so as we sit or stand as you wish, we sing together, Be Still My Soul.
Would you like to be seated for our time of prayer? Our prayers this morning will be based around our gospel reading from St. Luke. Lord, as we gather in your presence, not only to hear your word to us, but also to bring the joys and concerns of our lives to you. Lord, you said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Our spirit can be poor in so many ways, We lift up those who struggle with addiction, mental illness, physical illness, violence, oppression, and fear. We pray for freedom from these struggles, for us and for those known only to you. You say, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. There are many things we mourn in this life. Loss due to death, to ageing, losses of jobs and relationships. Each loss is real and each loss is difficult. And yet we find comfort knowing that you also wept and mourned in the loss of your life and the life of your friends. We pray to death today, especially for the family and friends of those we've named. Lord, you say, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Lord, we don't desire to inherit the things of this earth, but we pray for humility and grace as we live our lives. Our inheritance comes through you, our Lord, who overcame all the powers of the air, so that we may be with you both in life and in death. You say, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Jesus, you told us when we seek your kingdom and your righteousness, then the things we need will be provided. Help us to trust in your words that when we seek you, you will provide. Give us, too, the courage to stand up to injustice, even when we are afraid. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. In a few minutes, we will pray, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. In teaching us this prayer, you taught us how to be merciful. Help us to let go of our pride so that we may find reconciliation in our relationships. Help us to see those who we may see as the other the homeless, the immigrant, the violent, or the foreigner. Help us to see them as our brother and sister in Christ and your beloved child. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. We know that the human heart is deceitful, Lord, so how will any of us see you? Help us to lay down the pride, greed, envy, anger, and lust in our hearts. Refine our intentions and desires so that your will is our will. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Violence seems to rule the world whether in the streets of our towns, the mountains of Afghanistan, the deserts of Syria and Iraq, or the cities of Africa, we are killing each other. 
Lord, forgive us. We pray not only for the absence of conflict, but for true peace, where weapons become instruments to tend crops and harvest trees, and there shall be no more war. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Most of us do not know about persecution, especially for righteousness' sake. But may we be aware of those who suffer and even die as they stand up for injustice. They stand for liberation, for peace and for basic human rights. As we gather so freely to worship you this morning, we pray safety for those who do so at the risk of prison or death. Shield them from danger as they boldly proclaim your word. Strengthen us so that we may be willing to stand up for what we know is true. And we bring our prayers together with the words our Saviour taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We are going to uh, join together in our closing song now. Um, which is again a song of trust in God. This is what this service today has been, that we trust God for those whom we've loved and lost. We trust God for ourselves and our walk through life. And this song begins, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And so I'd invite you to stand as we sing together, Cornerstone. Darkness seems to hide his face. 
trumpet sound Oh may I then in him be found Dressed in his righteousness alone Faultless then before the throne And so as we draw our service to a close, may God give to you and to all those you love his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you all this day and always. Amen. We will be having tea and coffee in this room in just a few moments, so please do stay behind for a chat, um, after which go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.